But starting any business, as you would know, is challenging, right? Because you have to build a team, product, get investors. That's a lot. And so if you look at the life stage of a, a startup, the first couple of years is often called the valley of death. Terrible term, but the valley, the valley of death. So if you look at a graph, it first dips before there's ex ex exponential scale. Right. And that's where probably most startups fail. And what we want to do, like accelerators, is to ensure that companies successfully get through the valley of death. And in Africa, most of the capital exists for later stage startups. So yeah. if we just look at the 2021 numbers, about 5 billion was invested in 860 startups last year. But if you look at that 5 billion, around 60% of that went for later stage. So once you through the value of debt, we call your series A. You've got client markets already, and you've got sustainable revenue in your business. You're probably generating around 100,000 US dollars every month in your business. That's when you're out of the value of debt. But you need to get through the value of death. And that's where angel investor networks, accelerators, and seed stage funds do very well to accelerate that through the value of death for startups. And so what we thought was that there is not enough money at the seed stage. Once companies come out of the accelerator, there wasn't enough capital for them to sustain themselves to get to a successful series A. So before Launch Africa, what you often saw was that, that companies came out of the and they rushed to do a Series A, but they didn't have the right fundamentals in the business. Revenue wasn't there, their team wasn't fully built, and they didn't have enough network. And started off with this fund. We started the fund at the start of what a way to start a new business, of course, uh, because we saw the need. Um, and our goal is to provide not only financial support, but we also provide essential non-financial support for our founders. Mm. And what I mean is for every dollar that we invest, we also ensure that companies get a dollar of non-financial support. And that means access to talent outside of funding, finding the right people to work for your organization is probably the biggest other challenge for, for access to talent, access to experts. So you as an individual, you probably need to have a broad array of advisors, experts advising you to grow your business. And we provide that to our founders. Mm. Then access to other investors um, mm. as you are raising and you're growing this business, you need more capital for its growth. Mm. And we introduce you to both African and global investors. Mm. So we definitely not only a financial backer, we work very closely with our portfolio companies to help them scale their business. So this So we've been doing this for yeah. yeah we, we've been doing this since July of 2020 now. Um, and we've invested in 116 companies um, across the continent. Okay. Um, and uh, currently we have 116 companies from 20 different African countries. So we definitely see ourselves as a frontier fund, not only investing in Nigeria, Kenya, Egypt, and South Africa, the big four major tech hubs, but we've also invested in Togo, Benin. We're very optimistic about West Africa, particularly Francophone Africa. We've invested in uh, about 12 investments in Senegal, five in, five in Ghana, Mm. based um, the DRC, um, and then obviously East Africa as well, um, Uganda, um, um, Kenya, uh, and then Southern Africa, 
um, South Africa, Botswana, um, and Zambia. Mm. So I, I said, sometimes we see companies where the technology or the business model is very disruptive, but they might not be investment ready yet. And then we have a team that work with the entrepreneur to make them investment ready. Mm. And it usually takes two to three months and then we will make an investment. Mm. So we consider, to give you an idea, in 2021, we looked at 1,500 companies and to date we've invested in 116 of them. Um, not that the rest aren't great companies, they were just not investment ready for us. Mm. So your final, before I come to your final ways, what do you expect from companies, uh, startup companies across the country, uh, the continent? I mean, and what are some of the, uh, your, your, your targets in the next five years? Mm. Yeah, so the great thing about African startups that I'm really excited about is that they solve real world problems, right? Mm. A grandmother is selling fruit at the market. She needs a way to pay for it. She needs that, that fruit needs to come from a farm, you know, like, and so what African entrepreneurs are doing is solving real daily problems or challenges faced by other Africans. Um, and I get very excited by that. You know, in Africa, we still have 600 million Africans that are unbanked. All of those people need to get into formal financial services. They need to start saving. They need to have sort of economic empowerment. So there's still a lot of opportunities that we, we have. What I, what I like is that more and more we're seeing innovative ideas around what, what corporates are struggling with. So corporates, obviously, major organization, slow to change, innovation is not so fast. There are great entrepreneurs, startup entrepreneurs, solving those corporate issues as well. And what's been exciting is during COVID, we saw that a majority of us Africans have gone online. We are now buying through platforms. But what's been great is you saw an increase in edtech, so education technology mm. across the board. You saw uh, an increase in health tech. So yes. now people have access to doctors through their mobile phone, right? They have access to experts. They have now got resources in order to ensure that they have got the ad medical advice that they need. We, for example, and this is a nice Ghanaian example, invested in a company called Flurry. And Flurry helps immigrants to save my medical insurances, just to give a financial peace of mind for their immigrants that are sending money back home for private. That is, and this is all through a mobile platform. That is incredible innovation, which was started because of the COVID. Get money across to loved ones. Mm. Um, so before, yeah, so, okay, okay, continue, please. So, so African in, uh, entrepreneurs or people with ideas try to solve real world problems that you see in your neighborhood, that you see in your company that's going to scale very fast across the African continent. Okay, so my final question has to do with the Ghanaian companies that you've supported. What exactly have you done for them? Can you mention a few of them? You said six of them. Uh, what have you done for them? And so yeah, that- yes, mean... so, Yeah, so we've invested in five. Um, I'll quickly go through them and I'll also talk about what their needs are. So um, Complete Pharma is a Ghanaian company, a most amazing agricultural company that uses data and technologies to connect all the stakeholders in the agri-chain value chain. And it ensures quality of control, proper standards in food production systems. So if you look at traceability, now through computed pharma, you can understand where your cucumber 
was planted um, and you can understand it through the value chain right into the retail store. Um, an amazing opportunity, especially um, as we, the world is going through food security at the moment and with food security, traceability and uh, affordability across the value chain become so important. And this is the model that Complete Pharma is bringing to the market. Um, very exciting agri-tech with large uh, opportunities, both in Africa um, and across the continent um, about, and, across, and globally, in fact, as well, because food security is an issue across the globe. Yeah. Number two is a company called the Africa Foresight Group. And it's actually the largest market of freelancers in Africa. So they, they offer freelance services to build companies uh, using their freelancers that work on the platform. So large companies, investment funds, development partners hire these freelancers to do work. So it's almost uh, the, the global equivalent would be the very successful Upwork um, and, free, and Africa Foresight Group founded by a female Ghanaian uh, founder is doing exactly the same, making freelance work um, readily available to Africans across the world. The next company that we invested in is Flurry. I love Flurry because Flurry is a company that provides cross-border medical insurance. It's a marketplace that brings peace of mind and financial security to immigrants that are working abroad to provide the people in country with uh, insurance policies um, for their loved ones in their home countries. Mm. And they do it through a very reliable and secure, affordable way through a marketplace where they have their customers and their uh, medical providers providing services to um, uh, families back home. Um, solving a real need, as we know, insurance market is underdeveloped in Africa and especially the medical insurance. Um, and this is really not only a company, but they're bringing a entire ecosystem, uh, they're building an entire ecosystem alongside with them. Mm. The next company is Spark. Um, Spark is a financial app helping Canadians move money in a faster, better, and simpler way. Um, and it is uh, it helps with peer-to-peer -peer transaction. <laughs> And you can view your, your, your transactions online um, at any time. And it especially works well for clubs, savings clubs, or any sort of um, mini community that is established. And then our, our final one is very similar. It's called Weyer Money. Mm. And Weyer Money, Weyer Money does yeah. a cross-border and cross-network remittances and payment solutions across the African continent. It's like a digital banking platform. Then... Um, we help founders to go through the EIs, key performance indicators. We provide an indicator of at your stage of your business, what be, should be your targets that you should be working towards. Um, and I would say, finally, we try our best to give exposure, marketing and branding to our portfolio companies we have access to some of the top events or forums and conferences that we always showcase our, our founders. I, just today, I introduced 14 of our founders to a big conference that is happening later um, in the year and they'll all be um, uh, presenting their business. And then finally, I would say we also help access to professional firms um, such as lawyers, tax, audits, IP, um, and any other auxiliary business. Mm. And we try to negotiate special terms for our startup founders. So each of them had $300,000, I mean, as, as a kind of a support. Uh, as an investment, yes. So we in, uh, this is an investment. And then our non-financial support is all the things I've just mentioned. So this kind of investment, is it that they are going to pay some money back to 
your company, or how is it like? So I, I should have said it's an equity investment. So we take a, a shareholding in our companies because we come in at the seed stage and we provide a small amount of capital, but a large amount of non-financial support. We typically only have about five to 10% of the equity in the business. Mm. Um, and that's why we are a high volume fund whereas other funds would probably only invest in 10 to 20 companies, but they have substantial equity. Our strategy is to have a small amount of equity, five to 10% in many companies, mm -hmm. because we want to have enough time to add non-financial support as well. Your final ways. Say again? Your final ways. Oh, yeah. Um, I would just like to encourage anybody listening. If you've got an idea, building any business takes patience, takes a lot of resilience and tenacity. But if, if there's any entrepreneur with patience, tenacity and resilience, it's an African entrepreneur. So continue building your businesses. And when you're ready for seed investments, please reach out to us at Launch Africa.